What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So what we're gonna do today is take a look at Bitcoin. We're going to look at this for the reason that we're trying to assess where the market is at right now. So we're looking at Bitcoin, but in reality, because Bitcoin is ultimately the market driver, we're looking at the entire market you can think of this as. And what we're doing here is looking at the short-term holder supply and the long-term holder supply because this is going to tell us kind of where we're going to expect to encounter both price resistances and support levels. And we're going to look at both of these, both the short and the long, because differentiating between the two is important. Long-term holders are typically going to form a level of support for investors. Short-term holders are typically going to create a level of resistance and a element of capitulation if the market continues on the trend that we're seeing right now. So we know we have inflation. We know we've seen the bond yield uh, inversion. We've seen the fact that there are systemic supply chain issues. We've seen the fact that the stock market is showing weakness right now. So these things are sort of coming to a point where there's a culmination of negative events occurring we have the Fed raising interest rates, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And these things all eventually come together to create a situation where, you know, at some point this has to come to a head. And, you know, when we say that, that doesn't mean it has to happen right now. But ultimately, based on all of the things that are going on right now, you have to ask yourself, What's the driving force for the market to just all of a sudden go to new all-time highs right now? If we look at market participation, we see that it's at extraordinarily low numbers. We see that volume is down across the board. So when you have this culmination of events all occurring at the same time, and you have all these influencers on social media, on YouTube, on Twitter, on Reddit, telling you every single day that the bottom's in, we're going to new all-time highs. And you have to really ask yourself, why are they doing that? What is their incentive to do that? Because, you know, we're seeing all of these events coming together. We're seeing that the market is just showing extreme levels of weakness. There's very little participation. We're just sitting right in this range here from any, you know, anywhere from the mid 30 Ks up to the mid 40 Ks. <clears throat> and while all of this is happening, market participation is continuing to drop. So you really have to sit back and ask yourself, you know, who are you taking uh, advice from? And why are, you know, what is the evidence that these people are giving you to support the fact that the bottom is in, which, you know, so many people are saying every day, where is the evidence? I'm not convinced that, you know, there's anything out there. I'm not seeing any data of any kind to suggest that the market is just ready for some massive turnaround. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't go up from here because we've seen in markets in the past when, you know, for instance, when the, when the bond yield curve uh, inverts, typically we'll actually see the market go on a nice run for, you know, months up to a year before things sort of start tumbling down. So that doesn't mean by any means that that can't happen right now. But, you know, I think with the other events that are going on that we're seeing, you know, with relation just to the crypto market, I don't think we're seeing anything to suggest that that's imminent right now because of the fact that all of the things that normally drive the market into these parabolic levels that people are talking about, all of those elements of the market are sort of absent right now. Because in general, it's the retail market that does that. Granted, the you know institutional type investors or big, big money investors, they typically get the ball rolling into, um, into the bull market. But it's the retail investors ultimately that take you know, they take the uh, reins and sort of drive us in to these sort of levels. When we go up to 40K in just a month, and then we go up to 60K in a month or two more. So it's, you know, you have to consider the total picture. And the total picture right now 
is showing us negativity on multiple fronts and a type of negativity that, that I don't think is easily going to um, just turn around out of nowhere. If anything, you know, if if some of the if some of the macro level events sort of uh, started going in our favor, in the investors' favor, and then we started seeing things like the retail market picking back up into the cryptocurrency asset class, then I may be convinced, you know, okay, maybe we're on the right track now. But when we're seeing a continual decline in volume, we're seeing a continual decline in network participation. I think there's just so many things right now suggesting that anyone who's telling you that the bottom's in and they're and you know they say it so definitively and they say it with such passion and, and such conviction that it sounds believable and ostensibly they are individuals who are in the know. But you know realistically you have to ask yourself are they benefiting themselves or are they benefiting you? So with that said, let's jump into the analysis. So the first thing we're going to look at here are short-term holders. So this is the short-term holder supply, which we have on the left. So what this is showing you is at each price. So, you know, we're looking at a range of, for the short-term holders, you can see we're looking at a range of 58,000 all the way down to around 35,000. So this constitutes 100% of the short-term holder supply. Okay, so anyone who's a short term holder, which is defined as a someone who's held for less than 140 days. If someone is a short term holder, they own coins in this range so we can specifically see where they hold those coins. And why does that matter? Well, anytime you're seeing someone do technical analysis, anytime you're seeing someone do price technical analysis and, you know, I've commented on this a lot but I'll keep commenting on it because, you know, I think it's that important. Price technical analysis in many ways is inferior to being able to look directly and ask yourself, where are the holders of the coins at? For instance, people last, uh, last week on Twitter, I posted something to the effect of, you know, I kept seeing uh, price TA people saying 43K. We have to hold, you know, 43K, that's the support level. But then, you know, we we did an analysis showing there's, why is that the support level? There is no support there. You know, you're just, you're looking at lines on a chart. Whereas I'm looking at the, at the on-chain data, which is showing me exactly where the support level is. We don't need to guess. We, we have no need to guess whatsoever. The support is from 39 to 40K. And, you know, this is when the price was up here at around 44, 45K. And naturally, we fell right through that 43K level that didn't exist. There was no support there. And we came straight down to this level here. These are the long-term holders or your support level holders. And that's where your support was. And if you see, that's where we've been holding up now for one, two, three, you know, about a week. Over a week, we've come right down to that level. And this is nothing magic here. This doesn't make me smarter than those guys. It's just a lot of your people doing price technical analysis are coming from the stock market. You don't have on-chain data in the stock market. So you have imperfect information in the stock market and you have significantly less imperfect information in the cryptocurrency asset class, specifically with relation to an asset like Bitcoin that has a robust uh, ledger where we can look directly on it and see where those coins are. So we don't need to guess. The price TA guys are using their best analysis that they have, you know, that they use when they're analyzing equities because you can't look and see where the equities are held by short-term and long-term holders in the stock market. You can do that in the cryptocurrency asset class, and you can do it because of on-chain data. So when we look at that on-chain data, we know right where we're very, very likely to encounter support at, okay? And we're going to encounter it where you have long-term holders, and that's because statistically speaking, a long-term holder is orders of magnitude less likely to sell the asset at any given 
price range. So when you encounter a level where you have a high number of long-term holders, like we see here at 41K, like we see all the way down into 40K, okay? And then ultimately we have quite a few long-term holders in this entire range, all right? So we're talking around 41K, all the way down to around here at 31K. What's interesting is when we look at the distribution of holders, we can see that essentially we have this massive number of short-term holders now. So that's 140 days. So, you know, just to, just to show you the date range that we're talking about here, we're talking from this day right here until right around here. Okay, so right around the end of November. So these are our short-term holders. And if we just draw where they're holding from, you can see that we're talking about this range right here. So all of the short-term holders are right in this range, but we want to know primarily where they're at. So there are not a lot up here. There's not a lot up in the high 50s. So first of all, we didn't spend very long in this range in terms of... Um, in terms of days that a someone being at that range would qualify as a short-term holder. So we actually have a ton of short-term holders now actually sitting right above us, okay? So we are sitting at 39K, so this red box is everything above us and everything above us where, you know, directly above us where we have a large number of short-term holders. And you can see that we're right in this area here, right in this range, from around 45, or actually around 44, all the way down to right here at around 39, up down to around 40. There's a ton of short-term holders. So these are people that have bought in the last week, and we're excluding coins that are less than a day old, because those are basically going to move in a large quantity wherever exactly where you're at, because you have people using super high margin, and they're just you know trying to grab little percentages. So right here, right where we're sitting, and this to me is slightly problematic, where we're sitting right now at around 39.3, there are a large number of short-term holders right above us because we've fallen now through the lower ends of this resistance level, okay? And if you looked even just last week, there were a large number of coins sitting kind of in this range here, right? In this uh, 44 up to around 47 range. But that has decreased now over the last few days. And why is that? And it's for the same reason that we've been just repeatedly seeing. We're getting up to these levels. You're seeing the, um, you know, we're going to new all-time highs type talk on social media. People FOMO in, and then it turns into, oh crap, we're not going to new all-time highs. And then they sell, they panic sell. Okay, and it's rinse and repeat, and we've been doing it for two months now. So, you know, we did it here in February. We came up to this 45K level, got rejected. We did it again here in March. We came up to the 45K level, got rejected. This time we did a little better. We got up to that 48K level, and yet again, we ran into a large number of shorter term holders. And as I said, you know, in the video that I made, Earlier in the week, when we were sitting at around 45K, I said it's going to be very difficult to get above this level. Why? There's a large number of short-term holders sitting right above us. And what do they do? They will sell the asset when there's market weakness. They'll sell the asset because of the fact that they've been sitting on a loss now. And they're happy to get out of that losing trade that they made. So the guys at 45K who thought we were going to new all-time highs, the guys at 45K, these guys sitting at 47K, they have been sitting on a loss and now they're back at their cost basis. And, you know, some of these guys in this range were at a big loss, okay? But we get back to their price range. They can get out of the trade at an even trade rather than being at a huge loss, especially when we were down at, you know, 35 going as low as 33. They can get out at an even trade and they do that. And that's what we saw. Now, that happens even in a bull market, in a raging bull market. But the difference is, in a bull market, who's there, you know, when these short-term holders panic sell at this, at this uh, location? Other short-term holders are there. Other retail investors that are buying new all-time highs. 
they are there to back up that that selling pressure. But in this market, when you have retail investors fleeing the market, then you run into a situation where there's no one to back up that sell pressure because there's no retail investor out there to back up that sell pressure. OK, so that's kind of what we're looking at. We're seeing that we have this large number of short term holders sitting in these locations and now they're sitting above us. So we have a new resistance level starting to form. And the longer that we sit at this 39K level, the more likely it is that this becomes a resistance level because now we have to go through these short term holders, especially if we go down from here. Now, none of this means we have to go down from here, but it's just sort of the bottom line. is It's how you have to think about it. You have to think about, you know, what are the dynamics of where you're sitting? OK, so the dynamics, however, also will include your long term holders. So we need to look at that. And on a brighter side of the coin, you know, we we showed that we have a large number of uh, long term holders right here. And we'll color these green to represent an area of support. So we said that we have pretty decent support sitting anywhere from thirty nine. So right around here at around thirty nine five all the way down to maybe, you know, the lower end of 39, we have a large amount of support. And that has played out. We've been trading exactly in this support range. But notice we're not going up from here because even the long-term holders, while this is a level of support, they aren't stepping in to buy at this price. Because I think a lot of people that, you know, you might consider your quote unquote smart money, you know, I think they're looking at what the uh, the facts on the ground are right now. And there's a lot of uncertainty. And so what are they going to do? They're not going to step in and, you know, start. Uh, they're certainly not going to panic buy. So you're not seeing anyone stepping in to sort of bounce us off this support level. Now, per usual, we could easily go on a run here. This None of this is to say we can't go on a run. We're simply speaking in probabilistic terms. I am fairly confident that we're not going to new all-time highs, at least in quarter two, potentially into quarter three. And if I just had to put my money where my mouth is, I would say likely not in quarter four either. With all of that said, and there's always a however, this is why in a situation like this, when we're we're well off all time highs from now, okay, so we're significantly off prior all time highs. In fact, if we just measure from where we're at right now, you know, we're down 43%. This is where I would use something like the DCA index risk model. And that's what I am using. So I'm continuing to dollar cost average into the asset. And I do it increasingly so as we continue to move down. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're approaching the market from a long term approach, then ultimately, you know, if you believe in Bitcoin anyway, if you believe in its long term vision, then these are very likely prices right now that are at a discount. We don't know where the bottom will be, however. We don't know if Michael Saylor will never let the price, for instance, just speaking hypothetically, we don't know if he would never let the price go below, let's say, 33K. Or something like that. I don't think that's likely. I don't think he's, you know, going to be sitting there buying all of the Bitcoin, making sure that it never goes below some price because he's also he's a long term investor. And that's how he's approaching this market. Also, Michael Saylor is not buying Bitcoin so that it, it, so that you can FOMO into it in 2022 and, you know, go to new all time highs. He's looking at this asset from the approach of what is its value going to be in 2040? What's its value going to be in 2050? That's the way he's approaching this asset. I assure you, he doesn't care whatsoever what the price in 2022 is. Okay, he has a long term vision for the asset. And the people that are, you know, approaching the asset class or any investment in a way such that, you know, they are heavily emotional about what it's doing right now, those people are going to tend to do worse as investors because of the fact that 
you know, when you're invested in something and you become emotional about it, you're much more likely to approach it in a way where you act irrationally. So you act irrationally like buying at a new all-time high. You act irrationally like buying at a new all-time high and then selling as we're starting to head down or capitulating. Okay. So those people are the ones that make it so that longer term investors can be highly profitable. So that's why we dynamically dollar cost average, because we don't know where the market top is. In 2018, at when we were at 8K, 9K, that was an excellent time to be buying Bitcoin because we didn't know where it's going. Okay. You could have bought at 10K on the way down at 10K, but if you kept buying, kept decreasing your cost basis, you know, you could have got your cost basis down by the, you know, the end of the road after the large capitulation, you know, you could have got your cost basis down into the 6K level. And this, you know, something like that applies here, mind you, and then been up 10X three years later. And that's how I approach the market here as well. It's how I approach it with Bitcoin. That's how I approach it with Ethereum. And then I'll continue, like I always say, to acquire some more altcoins in smaller amounts because they're much more volatile and much riskier and much less likely to recover in the next cycle. I'll continue to buy altcoins right now. And mind you, the next cycle, we don't know when that will be. That could be in 2022. That could be in June. It could be in uh, June of 2026. You don't know when it is. So you have to have a plan that doesn't involve you being, you know, over invested to the point that you're emotional and getting stressed out about whatever your investment is. If you can't make an investment and sit there on it and not worry about what it's going to do over the next six months, over the next year, then you either A, invested too much of your money and, you know, you will therefore be unable to be non-emotional no matter what happens. And that's a fatal error that you make. And Or B, you have yet to develop the appropriate mental state or mind frame that you need to be in to be a successful investor. I know it's easy to say this, but do you think Warren Buffett panic sells anything ever in his life? I assure you he doesn't. Okay, he makes an investment thesis and he invests into those projects over time with a long-term vision. And that's what we have for Bitcoin. If you're investing in Bitcoin right now, assuming that it's going to go to the moon, all the data is showing you that that's not happening right now. It's just, there's nothing whatsoever anywhere in the economy, in the crypto market, anywhere to suggest that there's just a, you know, a, a steamroll of money coming in to this asset class and driving and driving the uh, the total crypto market cap up trillions of dollars right now. Where's that money coming from? The Fed is pulling money off of their balance sheets. They're pulling it out of their balance or off their balance sheets right now, taking that money, removing it from the market. So you tell me if you think the market is going to new all-time highs. Where is that money coming from? And if you can't do that, if you can't logically do that without just saying, you know, well, so, so and so told me that it is. If you can't come up with a logical reason that the market is going to go to new all-time highs, you need to question, you know, what advice you're taking. And institutional FOMO, that's not a thing. Institutions, A, they don't FOMO. OK, they're not just sitting out here, you know, sitting on Binance at two in the morning, worrying about what what some other institution is doing and just dumping into the asset. They're going to do it slowly over time and they're not doing it on exchanges. So they're not going to drive the price up overnight anyways. They will slowly pull it off, slowly pull it off as the prices go down. They'll pick their spots to get into the market and then they'll get in over the counter. So you're not going to see an instant uh, reaction in the price. The reactions in the price will come when supply is continually pulled off over time, over long periods of time, and 
then the retail market starts to get interest as the price they you know they see the strength coming back into the market but that certainly doesn't happen in isolation and it doesn't happen when there's so many other worrying factors going on in the economy so we see that you know the the short term supply is sort of starting to flip on top of us in other words we're starting to see where lots of these short term holders are now at a loss. And as they become more and more at a loss, they become more likely to capitulate. Okay. And on top of that, we are now driving into this support level. So into the 39 K and potentially lower where we have this uh, large group of long, long term holders. Okay. So this is just a broad, broad look at the market. I wanted to give some of my thoughts in this video talking about, you know, kind of how I'm seeing the market, kind of how I approach investing and how I don't approach investing. And that's perhaps more important. Um, but it's also some things to think about. So on the positive end of the spectrum, we have a large area of support here. We have a large area of support right in this 30, the low 30s up to 39K. So I think it's going to be difficult to, you know, just go flying through this zone. But I do think we have a decent level of support in this lower 30K up to around 40K. So it's a long one, guys, but I think there's a lot of things to talk about as we're sitting, you know, down here. So the way I'm approaching it, just to quickly summarize, as we go down more, I'll buy more. And as we get into these levels, I stop buying. I'll slow down my buying in these levels and I'll increase my buying down in these levels, okay? So if we go down to 30K, I'll be buying a lot. And then if it goes down even more than that, that's fine. I'm okay with that. As long as nothing happens, not, you know, there, no, no sort of uh, event occurs that, that um, invalidates whatever my investment thesis is. So I'm just dollar cost averaging. I do it once a week, as you all know at this point, and I'll continue to do that. So I hope that uh, can help put some things in perspective for people. I think there's a lot going on in the market right now that's, you know, leans heavily towards the, you know, negative side. But if you have a long enough approach to the market, these tend to be the best times to be acquiring the asset. These tend to be the times where people make money. You make a few dollars in the bull market, you become rich in the bear market. So that's it. Until next time, guys, as usual, see you.